Hello everyone this is part 8 of what if Naruto had the ultimate dojutsu, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. Begin. Genma yelled as Kiba charged Shino. Kiba threw a kunai with the hopes of causing a distraction to Shino, but cursed as the bug boy's eyes followed him as his insects blocked the kunai. Kiba kept up his charge and added chakra to his feet as he appeared closer and closer to Shino. Shino raised an eyebrow at Kiba's speed, but wrote it off as he sent his bugs to swirl around Kiba. Kiba pivoted his foot fast which caused him to vanish from sight. Sum and Hana smirked as they saw the results of their training with Kiba showing. Shino looked to the right and left for Kiba, but couldn't find him as Kiba appeared behind him. Shino turned his head fast and narrowed his eyes. He's fast, Shino said as Kiba and Akamaru spun violently at him. Gachuga, Kiba yelled as he charged at Shino, but Kiba underestimated Shino's bugs as the Abare made a wall of insects to take the blow. Kiba sighed as he backed away from Shino and cracked his knuckles. Kiba gave a smile showing his canines. That's right Shino, it's no fun if you're not into it, Kiba said as he charged back at Shino. Shino allowed his bugs to gather around him as Kiba threw out multiple smoke bombs and threw them at Shino. Shino covered Shino's form as Kiba tried again. Kiba shredded the smoked area as the crowd cheered from the exciting match. Naruto chuckled along with Haku as they watched the match. He never did know how to hold back or let up. Naruto said with caused Haku to nod with smile. Soon the smoke dissipated as Kiba and Akamaru backed up away from the area. Kiba gasped as he saw Shino was gone before seeing bugs crawl out from all sides of the arena. Shino appeared in a tree as the insects neared Kiba. Kiba and Akamaru backed up, but smirked as they ran up the wall of the arena. Naruto smirked as he found what Kiba was going to do. Kiba and Akamaru ran alongside the wall as they felt Shino's intense gaze onto them as they bugs began to climb up the wall. Kiba sighed as he yelled for Naruto. Hey Naruto, do you mind if I take a jutsu from you? Kiba asked him. Everyone in the stadium turned to Naruto and awaited his answer. Sum and Hana wondered what they did as Naruto gave him a thumbs up. Go for it Kiba. I have no complaints, Naruto told him. Kiba smirked as he made a familiar hand sign. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Kiba yelled as three Kibas came into view along with three Akamaris. Shino arched his eyebrow at Kiba as he wondered what the Inazuka was planning. Kiba turned to his mother and sister with a grin. Ka-san you should add this to our family's Jutsu scroll, Kiba yelled as all the clones jumped off the walls. Everyone spun violently as they wrecked the ground, the walls, and everything else. Taju Gachuga, multi fangs, passing fangs, Kiba yelled as they drilled through the bugs that surrounded them. Shino gasped as one aimed for him and left the three. Shino tried to maneuver through the many passing drills, but found it increasingly difficult as there was too much chaos to try to think. Shikamaru rubbed the back of his head as he thanked Kami that he didn't have to go against something like that. Shino stepped on the ground as all the spinning Kibas shot into the air. And now to end everything, Kiba said as Shino turned to see the Akamaris closing in on him from the sides. Shino couldn't see a way of escape from the drilling madness as they all collided and hit their target causing a mess of dust and earth to rise around the arena. The Inazuka clan is as powerful as ever Hokage Dono, Kazekage said to Sarutobi. Sarutobi narrowed his eyes at the Kazekage, but turned back to the field. Sometime the person who trains the most brings out the best of their abilities, Sarutobi responded. Kazekage nodded in agreement as the dust settled down. Genma walked up to the middle to see Kiba on top of Shino with a kunai to his neck. He had won his trademark smile while Shino sighed and turned to the proctor. Proctor I resign, Shino said to him. Genma smirked with a nod as he raised his hand. The winner is Kiba Inazuka, Genma yelled. Everyone cheered for Kiba while he jumped up and down. Genma chuckled as he turned to the next match. Last match, Haku Momaki vs. Dosu Kinuta, Genma said. Haku appeared on the field and waited for her opponent, but he never came as Genma looked at his watch. Haku started to groan, but couldn't do anything about it. Due to lateness, Dosu Kinuta is disqualified, Genma announced. 
The crowd booed as Haku began to leave, but was stopped by Genma. Haku Momoki you might as well stay here, Genma told her. Haku raised an eyebrow, but nodded as Genma read the list. Next match, Haku Momoki vs Gara. Genma yelled out. Naruto narrowed his eyes as Gara came to the field. Haku smirked as she stared at the sand user. Gara gave Haku a weird twisted smile as they came to the center of the field. Genma stared at both of the fighter and took his senban out of his mouth. All right, let's do this, Genma said as he raised his hand. Kiba turned to Naruto to see his dojutsu in full blast as Kiba quirked up an eyebrow at him. Kiba never saw Naruto have such a look of eagerness on his face before and it made him shrink under Naruto's presence. What's wrong Naruto? Kiba asked him. Naruto continued to look at the arena as he kept his dojutsu active. Pay attention to this match Kiba. I think something interesting is going to happen, Naruto told him. Kiba gave Naruto a serious look, but nodded as he turned back to the arena. Genma dropped his hand with the signal to begin and jumped back. Haku and Gara didn't move for a while and engaged in a stare off. Naruto kept his gaze on Gara as he felt something off about him. Naruto knew he had the Shukaku inside him, but it felt like it was more than that. Haku dropped her sword to the ground and charged at Gara. Gara remained stoic, but shot a wave of sand at Haku as Naruto copied the sand with his dojutsu. Haku grinned as she quickly moved to the side, but kept up her charge and threw three senban at the Ichibi Jinchuriki. Gara stood motionless as the sand blocked the senban by making a sand bunshin. Haku smirked as she continued to charge. Why is he still charging? He won't get to me, Gara said, but gasped as the sand in front of him exploded leaving an open spot for Haku. Gara narrowed his eyes as Haku managed to get through his defense. Haku smirked as she attempted a giant slash across chest, but the sand got in her way as Haku pivoted her foot. She suddenly disappeared and reappeared behind Gara as he turned back to her. He's fast, Gara said as Haku kicked him across the arena. Haku gave a warm smile as she picked up her sword and rested it on her shoulder. Well Gara-san, it seems that your armor is quite resilient, but I can stop it right here and now, Haku said as she went through various hand signs. Gara raised an eyebrow before Haku finished her hand signs. Suten, Suryuden no Jutsu, Water Release. Water Dragon Jutsu, Haku yelled as she sent the Water Dragon at Gara. Gara remained emotionless as the sand shot forward at the dragon, but he suddenly gasped as the sand couldn't fight the dragon. Instead, the dragon changed the sand to mud as it still rushed and slammed into Gara. Gara was drenched and his sand was mostly mud while he gave Haku another weird smile. Yes, that's it. Make me feel alive, Gara said, which Haku smirked. Haku picked up her sword and ran her Hyoten Chakra through it making it an ice sword. I will make you feel alive. I'll grant your request Gara-san, Haku said as she charged back at Gara. Gara having his sand turned to mud couldn't use it to defend as Haku closed in on him. Gara smirked as he made an unknown hand sign as the arena started to shake. Haku looked to see the dirt and sand around them converse on her as the ice user backflipped away from the incoming sand. So he can control more than just the sand in that gourd, Haku thought as she backed up to the wall. Gara's sand stopped as it formed around him and encasing him in a small dome. Gara, is he going to use it now? We haven't got the signal to start yet, Temari thought to herself. Haku threw three senban at the dome, but it was too tough and simply flung him off as Gara enchanted some words. Haku narrowed her eyes as she turned to her sword, but a smile came across her face as she closed her eyes. All right Gara-san, stay in there. I can show my new Hyoten Jutsu to everyone, Haku said as she focused her chakra into her sword. Naruto wondered what she was doing along with Kiba as everyone saw a fierce ice storm swirl around the arena. Haku smirked as everyone wondered what was up with the weather. Haku charged at Gara as she ran down the wall. Haku moved fast across the sand as Naruto looked at her sword in awe. Kiba look at that, Naruto told him as he pointed his finger at Haku's sword. Kiba looked in the direction he was pointing and widened his eyes. What is that? Kiba wondered along with Naruto. Haku continually charged at the dome and made a clean slash with her sword as she yelled. Hyoten, Sumatai Kei's no Ken, ice release, sword of the cold wind, suddenly multiple ice shards came from the dome as everyone wondered about the person inside. Gara stopped his chanting as he felt Haku's sword aimed at his side. 
Gara put his hand on his side as he saw blood drip on his fingers. What is this warm feeling? Blood. A-H-H-H-H-H. Blood it's my blood. Gara yelled shocking everyone including Haku from the outburst. Haku gasped as she felt something tug on her sword. Haku gritted her teeth as she tried to take it out from the sand dome. Haku widened her eyes when she was a weird looking hand clinging onto her sword. Haku managed to get her sword away as she dropped to the ground. The arm regressed back into the dome as a sudden roar come from the dome. Haku sweated as she wondered what she got herself into, but didn't run away. The shell soon shattered as Gara came out holding his side. He's hurt. He's hurt really badly, Temari said to herself. Suddenly white feathers came across the stadium as people began to fall asleep. Most of the shinobi recognized the genjutsu and dispelled it soon enough. Kiba, hold still, Naruto said as he dispelled the genjutsu that was casted on him and Kiba. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he consulted Kyuubi for some help. Kyuubi chan do you feel anything? Naruto asked her. Kyuubi nodded from the audience where she was sitting as she turned to a weird anbu. Yes Naruto-kun, get ready. I think something big is going to happen sir. Kyuubi didn't finish her sentence as everyone heard a giant explosion come from the top of the tower. Everyone gasped as they turned to the source of the explosion to see their hockage facing off against someone other than the Kazekage. Naruto narrowed his eyes as Kyuubi appeared next to him. Naruto-kun, it's an invasion. That's Orokimaru in there, Kyuubi told him. Naruto slightly cursed the timing as he saw Temari and Kankuro take Gara away. Naruto saw Sasuke go after them along with Sakura while most of the other genin went to escort civilians to safety. Naruto and Kiba appeared next to Haku as the ice user pouted. Man, I never get to fight for long, Haku said despite the situation and the sounds of clashing metal. Naruto sighed as he turned to the direction the sooner genin escaped in. Sorry Haku, but we'll have to leave that for later. Right now we need to find Gara and stop them. I don't know what they're planning, but it's a good start to stopping this invasion, Naruto told them. Haku and Kiba nodded as Team 7 left the Chunin Stadium and ran after them sooner Genin. Naruto and his team ran through the trees as they saw and heard the sounds of the invasion over the village. Man, this is bad. Let's hurry up and get this over with, Naruto told them. All three nodded and since they were a tracker team, they were able to find the footprints fast and followed them. Haku turned her head and knew they were being followed, but smirked as she saw Shino and Shikamaru behind them. Man this is such a drag. Why does this have to happen now? Shikamaru asked his rhetorical question. Everyone shrugged their shoulders as Shikamaru stopped. You guys go on ahead. I have a few pains in the butt to deal with, Shikamaru said to them. Everyone narrowed their eyes, but nodded as they left the lazy genius behind. Soon around six Oto Shinobi came out from the bushes. Alright guys, how many moves while it take before the king is brought down? Shikamaru asked as he took out a kunai. The rest of the group ran through the trees, but were stopped by a rain of kunai that came from the trees. Everyone saw Kankuro come up with his puppet next time him and a smile on his face. You're not getting past me. Surrender or die, Kankuro told them. Everyone narrowed their eyes, but Shino stepped in front of them as he turned to the rest of his group. You guys go, you're the only ones who came stop this from happening, Shino told them. Haku, Kiba, and Naruto nodded with their thanks as they ran ahead leaving Shino to fight against Kankuro. Naruto channeled as much Chaka to his feet as he could until they all came up to see Sasuke on a tree branch and Sakura strapped to a tree, unconscious. Naruto saw what looked like a transformed Gara lunge at Sasuke in an effort to end his life. Naruto sighed as he took out his lightning sword and sped towards Gara. Die. Gara yelled as he tried to hit Sasuke but the hit never came as Sasuke opened his eyes to see Naruto block the punch with his sword. Sasuke gritted his teeth while Naruto saw the curse mark nearly across Sasuke's face. Well team, you never fail to disappoint me, Naruto said as he kicked Gara back and into a tree. Haku and Kiba came after him as Gara gave a maniac laugh. I will destroy you all. You can't stop me, Gara said as Naruto turned to Kiba and Haku, who were waiting for Naruto's orders as for what to do. Haku, try and get the banshee out of the sand. Kiba, come fight with me and team, stay out of the way, Naruto said as the three did their jobs. 
Sasuke seethed as he felt like he just couldn't match up to Naruto in any way. Why is that damn dope so strong? I'm a damn Uchiha, an elite. Why can't I surpass that damn bastard? Sasuke asked in anger as Haku came up to Sakura. Haku inspected the sand for a weak point while Temari watched Naruto and Kiba fight the mini Shukaku form of Gara. Why are they fighting? They must be stupid, Temari said to herself as Naruto took out Kasumi and Kiba took out Akamaru. Kiba, how many clones can you make? Naruto asked him. Kiba cracked his knuckles with a smile as they neared Gara. I can make about five without straining myself. Same with Akamaru. Why, do you have a plan? Kiba asked him. Naruto nodded with a smile as he whispered the plan in Kiba's ear. Gara narrowed his eyes as he swung five sand shuriken at them. You can't beat me with anything. Just give up and die. Gara yelled as Naruto and Kiba moved out of the way. Naruto landed on an adjacent tree branch to Kiba along with the dogs. Ready Kasumi-chan? Naruto asked her. Kasumi nodded as Naruto started the plan. Naruto charged at Gara with a grin on his face as Gara sent a sand shuriken at Naruto. All right, let's go. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Naruto yelled as he made a clone. The Bunshin grabbed his clothes and flung Naruto out of the way as he continually charged at Gara. Naruto kept up the smirk as he managed to get far enough to Gara for his plan. Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Naruto yelled as he made hundreds of clones. All the clones smirked as they attacked Gara from all sides. Gara gasped at the sheer number of them as he managed to dispel a few with his attacks, but it wasn't enough as about five Naruto's got under Gara. Naruto smirked as he just needed to cause Gara some form of damage. Gara was suddenly kicked into the air as Naruto yelled. I knew Zuka, Naruto said as he sent Gara higher and higher until he was high in the air. Gara gasped as Kiba, Kasumi and Akamaru appeared above him and spun violently and slammed into Gara. Quote dot dot dot. Gachuga Rendon, Inazuka Fang passing Fang Barrage, Kiba finished as they sent Gara spiraling into the ground. Naruto and Kiba smirked as they landed back onto the trees. Gara looked up from where he was and narrowed his eyes. I'm losing. To these weaklings. I will not die. I will not cease to exist. Gara yelled his sand shot upward into his sky and a puff of smoke came out covering a vast area. Everyone jumped back as the smoke dissipated. Naruto widened his eyes along with Kiba, Temari, Haku and Sasuke as they saw the Shikaku in full form. So that's Shikaku. I didn't know he had such a homicidal looking demon inside him, Naruto said as he turned to Kiba. Kiba, get back. I'll take care of this. You get to a safe distance, Naruto told him. Kiba seemed reluctant to obey that order, but the seriousness in Naruto's eyes told him to trust him. Kiba slowly nodded and backed up with Akamaru as Kasumi came up to Naruto. Naruto-sama, what are you going to do? Kasumi asked him. Naruto picked up Kasumi and placed her in his jacket as Gara yelled. All right Naruto Uzumaki, try and fight me now. Gara yelled as made a hand sign. Tanuki Neri no Jutsu, play possum Jutsu, Gara said as he went to sleep. Naruto gasped as he acted fast and went through his hand signs. Kuchio's no Jutsu, Naruto yelled as giant smoke covered the field. Everyone waited for the smoke to disperse before looking, but what they saw surprised them. Sasuke and Temari were dumbfounded at the sight while Haku and Kiba wondered how it was possible. Naruto smirked as he stood on top Kyubi in her full nine-tailed form. Kyubi looked up at Naruto on her head and smiled. A rather pleasant way of calling for help Naruto-kun, Kyubi told him. Naruto chuckled with a nod as Kyubi turned back to Shukaku who was laughing like a manic. I'm back baby, Shukaku yelled as Kyubi rolled her eyes at him. Shukaku turned to see Kyubi in front of him as he gave a twisted chuckle. Kyubi, still working with that brat of a container. You should simply dominate him then kill him, Shukaku said which made Kyubi chuckle. Naruto smirked also as everyone else wondered what was so funny. Sorry Shukaku, but I respect my container. At the very least he treats me the nicest way in the longest time, Kyubi told him. Shukaku narrowed his eyes as Naruto turned to Kyubi for a bit of advice or help. So Kyubi-chan, how do we get him to leave? Naruto asked her. Kyubi narrowed her eyes, but saw the spot where Gara was as she pointed at him. Hit him there. Shukaku can't be here if the host is awake. Walk that Gara kid up and we can have Shukaku gone in an instant, Kyubi told him. 
Naruto nodded as QB lowered her back and charged at Shukaku. Shukaku chuckled as he took a breath of air and hit his stomach. Fuyuten, Renkudan, wind release. Drilling air bullet, Shukaku yelled as he sent three air bullets at Naruto and QB. Naruto and QB stopped as QB and Naruto did the tiger seal together. Katen, Kariu Enden no Jutsu, Naruto and QB yelled together as they shot the fire at the three bullets of wind. The air bullets enhanced the fire as the fire hit Shukaku which caused the Bayou to whine about being burned. Naruto and QB took the momentary distraction and managed to catch up to Shukaku and hold him down with QB's teeth and claws. Go Naruto-kun, QB said as Naruto jumped off her head and ran up to Gara as Naruto pumped his fist full of chakra. Rise and shine sleeping beauty, Naruto yelled as he slammed his fist into Gara's face. Gara opened his eyes as Shukaku groaned. No. I just got here. I don't want to go back. Shukaku said, but it was futile as he vanished and the sand shattered. Naruto fell the ground also as he tried to stand to his feet, but couldn't so he made you and crawled towards Gara. No, don't come near me. I will not cease to exist. I'm not gonna die here, Gara said as he saw Naruto ever so slowly move to him. Naruto gave a soft smile and looked up at Gara who wondered what there was to smile about. I know that pain. The pain of being alone and rejected. The feelings of loneliness. I thought like you at one time. That no one loved me nor cared for me, Naruto said as Gara widened his eyes at the perplexing blonde coming over to him. But why? Why didn't you end up like me? Gara asked him. Naruto smirked as he stopped for a second, but gave another smile. I had my friends and my family to help me. I had Kubi chan Kasumi-chan, Hana-chan, Kiba, Haku, Maijiji, and Soom chan I had plenty of people. For me, to fight and protect what's important to me is more important than even my life, Naruto told him. Gara shifted his gaze from Naruto as looked up at the blue sky as he sighed. Friends, family, bonds, are these the things that make you so strong, Naruto Uzumaki? Gara thought as Naruto smirked with a nod like he was answering his question. Soon Temari and Kankuro came to Gara's aid which made Naruto wonder about Shino. Both seemed ready to fight Naruto, but were stopped by Gara. That's enough. I'm done, Gara said to them. Temari and Kankuro gasped as they looked at their brother's tired form. I can't believe it. He's had enough fighting, Temari thought as they turned back to Naruto. Both saw he couldn't do anything and took Gara and ran off. Haku and Kiba came to Naruto's aid as they watched the Suna Genin leave. So what happens Naruto? Shall we give a chase? Kiba asked him. Naruto chuckled as he rolled on his back as Kasumi came out of his jacket. Kasumi rubbed her body on his face as Naruto held her in a loving embrace. No Kiba, we'll let them go. I think they've got a lot of making up to do, Naruto said as he passed out on the field with Kiba and Haku smiling at him. Sakura was on the tree branch knocked out along with Sasuke who wondered what he was still lacking so he could achieve power and avenge his clan. The war of Oto and Suna against Kanoa ended in a victory for Kanoa as the forces from both villages ran away and the people cheered in victory. Not much damage was reported due to the work the shinobi of Kanoa were doing against the enemy. Orokimaru and his accomplices were driven out also as the Anbu recovered a passed out Sarutobi who spent the next few days in the hospital. All in all, Kanoa had been very lucky as not much needed repairing for the village. One week and a half later, thanks to the efforts of the shinobi, the village and most places were repaired in a few days and people started going on missions again. Sarutobi was able to go back to the Hokage mansion as he called the Chunin exam participants and their sensei to the room. Naruto had spent the week relaxing with Haku and Kiba as they all felt they all needed that week off. Naruto managed to catch up to Haku and Kiba on their way to the Hokage mansion. Well did you guys enjoy the week? Naruto asked them. Both nodded as there wasn't much work to be done, but due to everyone's efforts they could enjoy the week off. It was pretty boring. Makes me want to get invaded again, Kiba said which caused Haku and Naruto to chuckle. Haku shook her head and looked at the sky. I hope I won't have to face any more psychotic people, Haku said with make Naruto and Kiba stifle a laugh behind her. Haku turned to them and gave a warm smile as she slowly unsheathed her sword and had an oni mask appear behind her. Naruto and Kiba paled as they looked at Haku. Is there something funny about what I said? Haku asked them. 
Naruto and Kiba shook their heads fast while Haku continued to walk to the Hokage Mansion. Kiba turned to Naruto and whispered. Remind me why you like here again. Kiba asked him. Naruto chuckled softly and rubbed the back of his head while trying to think of the best way to answer Kiba's question. She has her fun and nice points when you don't make fun of her, Naruto said to which Kiba nodded absently trying to get his mind around that answer as Team 7 made it to the Hokage Mansion. Hokage Mansion. Everyone arrived in the office to see Shino, Shikamaru, Neji and Sasuke with them along with Asuma, Kurenai, Kakashi, and Genma. Naruto gave a wave to Kurenai who formed a soft smile and waved back which caused Asuma to narrow his eyes at the blonde. Everyone waited for Sarutobi to arrive as they spent their time in the room. After about 10 minutes, Sarutobi came through the door and sighed as he sat in the chair. Sarutobi glanced at all the people in the room and smiled. Sorry about that. The council meeting took longer than I hoped, Sarutobi said to them. Everyone chuckled with a nod as Sarutobi turned to all the genin in the room. First of all I want to say congratulations on making it to the Chunin exam finals and second, a thank you for helping the village in that time of crisis. There are time in every genin's life that they gain the ability to lead and tackle greater challenges and missions. They show intelligence and power that brings them to the next level. These are called Chunin. I can't promote everyone, but I wanted everyone to know that they did above well and beyond, Sarutobi told everyone. The Jonin smirked while the Genin showed their excitement. Sarutobi pulled out a Chunin vest and smiled. For great intelligence and use of tactics, I promote from Genin to Chunin, Shikamaru Nara, Sarutobi said as Shikamaru stepped forward and rubbed the back of his head. Man, troublesome that just means more work for me, Shikamaru said which made everyone sweet drop but it got a laugh from Naruto and Asuma. Sarutobi took out the next vest and smiled again. For a spectacular show and use of power and techniques. I promote from Genin to Chunin, Kiba Inazuka, Sarutobi said as he gave the Chunin vest to Kiba. Kiba gasped as he grabbed the vest and bowed to Sarutobi with a thank you. Naruto patted Kiba on the back while Haku gave a warm smile to him. Sarutobi took out one last Chunin vest and looked at the others. For a good show and astounding the audience. I promote from Genin to Chunin, Haku Momoki, Sarutobi said to her. Haku smiled with a nod as she took the light green vest and smiled. Naruto smiled as he gave Haku a hug, but really felt sad that he didn't get promoted. He really didn't want to tell Soom, but he knew he'd have to. Sarutobi chuckled, but took out one last vest which was dark green and brought everyone's attention back to him. For astounding everyone, even me and the former Kazekage with your power, speed, and overall use of very unique jutsu that you technically shouldn't have. I promote from Genin to Tokubatsu Jonin, Naruto Uzumaki, Sarutobi said as Naruto dropped his jaw along with Kiba and Haku. Kakashi smiled along with Kurenai and Asuma. Shikamaru smirked as he talked about troublesome blondes and their luck. Shino had a small smile underneath his coat, but no one knew that. Naruto absently grabbed the Jonin vest and looked at it as a few tears came down his face. Sarutobi got up and faced the window. I'm happy for all of you, but it has just gotten harder for everyone as you all have more responsibilities to uphold. Hokage Sama. The path of the shinobi isn't an easy one and. Hokage Sama. Asuma said which caused Sarutobi to turn around. What is it Asuma? Sarutobi asked him. Asuma chuckled with his cigarette and pointed along with everyone. Naruto's gone, Asuma said to him. Sarutobi chuckled as he knew where Naruto was going as was Kiba and Haku. No one could really blame him. Hiruzen and sighed as he took a puff of his smoke. Well, I'll save the speech for later. Enjoy the rest of you days off, Sarutobi said as everyone filed out. Haku and Kiba decided to celebrate, but didn't bother looking for Naruto since he was probably already celebrating. With Naruto. Naruto ran across the rooftops at a high speed with a smile on his face as he looked at his vest. Naruto had the biggest grin across his face as Kasumi popped her head out of Naruto's jacket. Well Naruto-sama, you must really be happy. What's the occasion? Kasumi said with a tease though she knew what the occasion was. Naruto smirked as he looked at Kasumi and kissed her on her head which caused Kasumi to blush. Don't tease me Kasumi-chan. I'm happy enough as it is, Naruto told her. Kasumi chuckled, but nodded as they came up to the Inazuka compound. Naruto smiled as he came into to see Hana reading and Soom on the couch. 
Naruto smiled as he came into the room. Hello Soom Chan, Hana Chan, Naruto told them. Soom smirked and Hana dropped her book as they turned to Naruto. Soom got up and faced Naruto with a smile as she looked at him and the grin on his face. I take it you made Chunin. Soom asked him. Naruto kept up his grin and shook his head which caused Soom to raise an eyebrow at him. Soom's smile faded slightly, but didn't vanish as Naruto kept up the mysterious smile. Then why are you so happy? Soom asked him with Hana curious to know also. Naruto sheepishly rubbed the back of his head and grinned as he held up the dark green vest to Soom and Hana. I made Tokubatsu Jonan, Soom Chan, Naruto told her. Soom gasped along with Hana as their smiles were back and in full bloom. Hana kissed Naruto on the cheek and smiled. Nice job Naruto kun, Hana told him. Naruto nodded with a smile as he turned to Soom. Hana glanced at her mother and simply backed away and gave the two a moment alone. Do I meet your conditions? Naruto asked her. Soom chuckled as she knelt down and slammed her lips into Naruto's causing the blonde to blush and drop his jonin vest. Naruto smiled as he heard QB jumping up and down in her cage. She didn't have to be there, but she wanted to see this day without raising a fuss. Naruto wrapped his arms around Soom as they went deeper into the kiss. Soom cupped Naruto's face as they deepened the kiss between them as they played with each other's tongues. The need for air became too great as both parted and panted. Naruto turned to Soom's flushed face and smiled. Soom chan, will you go out with me? Naruto asked her. Soom smiled as she thought over Naruto's request. Soom smirked and turned back to Naruto and gave him another soft kiss. Of course Naruto-kun, I'm more than happy to go out with you, Soom told him. Naruto nodded with a smile as Soom stood to her feet and grabbed Naruto's hand. Naruto quirked up an eyebrow as he felt Soom leading him somewhere. Soom-chan where are we going? Naruto asked her. Soom smiled as she led Naruto upstairs. Now that you're an adult, you are going to fulfill an obligation you have to me, Soom told him. Naruto suddenly blushed as he heard QB fake cry. My Naruto-kun is an adult now. Make her scream Naruto-kun, QB said as Naruto's blush deepened. Soom led Naruto to her room and closed the door. Naruto saw the bed that was made for two people as he turned back to Soom. Are you sure Soom-chan? I don't want you to think that you have to rush this, Naruto told her. Soom smirked as she walked up to Naruto and gave him a hug. Thank you Naruto-kun, but as the alpha female, I need this and I know you want this. Do you want to? Soom asked him. Naruto closed his eyes and smiled before cupping Soom's face and giving her a soft kiss. Of course Soom-chan, Naruto said as Soom gave a soft smile. Soom gave Naruto a deep kiss as she played with his tongue. Naruto already felt dominated by Soom, but fought back surprising Soom as he invaded her mouth. Soom's body began to heat up as Naruto used one of his hands to knead her breasts. Soom moaned in the kiss as Naruto used his other hand to massage her shoulder. Soom loved the feeling of Naruto's hands on her body. Naruto brought Soom's body closer to him as they managed to stand and walked over to the bed without separating. Both fell to the bed as Naruto moved one of his hands under her shirt and gave Soom's breasts a hard squeeze. Oh Naruto-kun, do it rougher, Soom said as Naruto complied with her and squeezed it harder. Naruto smirked as he came to the assumption that Soom enjoyed being dominated, not to mention that she might have enjoyed some rough play. Naruto decided to test his theory as he broke the kiss with Soom and stared at her hungrily. Soom looked into Naruto's powerful eyes as she saw the look of a pure alpha male in them. It all made Soom blush as Naruto ripped the shirt Soom was wearing as her breasts popped out. Soom grinned from the rough play as Naruto found a weak point with her. Soom decided to have her own fun and try to turn the role of dominance as she flipped Naruto over and hungrily devoured his lips. Naruto felt his animal instincts kick in as his nails sharpened and his body grew more feral. Naruto grabbed Soom's back as she felt his claws dig into her skin. Soom gave a pleasured moan as she became more feral also. Naruto grabbed her breasts roughly and stared to play with them as Soom gave more moans that she was enjoying it. Do you like this Soom-chan? Naruto asked her as he began to suck one of her tits. Soom tried to stifle a moan, but it was hard to from the increasing pleasure. Naruto managed to turn the tides back to his favor as he switched positions with Soom and continued to suck her breasts. 
Soon knew she got dominated, she wasn't really one to give up so easily, but the vigor in Naruto's eyes told her that she was better off surrendering now. Naruto gave Soom a small bite on her left tit and let go as he kissed his way down her body. Naruto instinctively came down her body until Soom took off her pants and watched Naruto pull them down showing her glorious spots. Naruto dove into Soom's spot as he gave her some pleasure licks and kisses as Soom gripped the sheets of the bed slightly tearing them. Naruto smirked at the constant movement Soom did as she tried to cope with the pleasure. Soom suddenly grabbed Naruto's blonde hair and held him close to her sweet spot as Naruto gave a small bite on her clit. Soom arched back from the ecstasy as Naruto got up and took off his shirt and his pants. Naruto dropped him to the floor as the new Tokubatsu Jonan stood in his boxes. Soom marveled at his muscular body and her eyes went down to see his bulge threatening to rip his boxes. It looks so big, Soom said as Naruto grabbed her last piece of garments and ripped it from her body. Soom got up and knelt in front of Naruto's covered wood as she licked her lips with anticipation. Naruto watched as Soom pulled down his drawers and showed his thick member. Soom looked at it for a bit, but devoured it fast into her mouth which caused Naruto to gasp and hold her head tightly. Soom didn't slow down as she bobbed her head up and down sending Naruto into an endless world of pleasure. Naruto felt the sloppy, wet area of Soom's throat and Naruto bent over and smacked her ass. Soom gasped at the action and let out a large moan as Naruto grabbed her head and moved faster. Soom almost lost herself to the feeling of Naruto's dick in her mouth as she felt Naruto's cock tighten. Soom-chan. I'm coming. Naruto yelled as he shot his load into Soom's mouth. Soom allowed some of it to drop, but savored the taste of Naruto's white milk in her mouth and swallowed it all leaving no trace behind. Soom looked at her cum-covered breasts and smile as she gave Naruto's dick a small kiss. Now Naruto-kun, no more foreplay. Show me that you can be the alpha male, Soom said to him. Naruto smirked with a nod as Soom turned around and placed her hands and knees on the bed with her butt in the air. Naruto quickly accepted the invitation and stuck his dick in Soom's pussy as he felt the warm feeling. Soom in turn, felt completely filled as she wondered how long it had been since she felt this way. Naruto rocked his hips back and forth as he grabbed Soom's thighs and moved faster for her. Soom-chan, you're so tight inside. It's incredible, Naruto said as Soom laid her head down and gripped the sheets tightly. Naruto continued his rhythmic thrusts as he heard Soom's pleasurable moans. Naruto brought Soom up on her knees as she rested on his lap. Naruto used his hands to give Soom's breasts a tight squeeze. Naruto-kun fuck me harder. Pound my pussy faster. Dominate your alpha female. Soom yelled as Naruto granted her wish and moved his hips faster and harder for her. Naruto stopped for a second to switch to a missionary position as Naruto shoved his cock back into Soom's tight spot. Naruto leaned forward and gave Soom a kiss which she returned and clawed at his back with her fingers. Soom could feel herself getting close along with Naruto as she gripped him even harder as Naruto winced at the pain, but let it alone as he felt them get healed thanks to his vixen. T Soom-chan, I'm about to come soon, Naruto said as Soom wrapped her legs around Naruto preventing his escape. Naruto turned to Soom who gave him her smile. Then come inside me Naruto. Make me yours. Become my alpha male, Soom said as Naruto moved faster while Soom felt her erotic high coming. Naruto couldn't hold it anymore and gave one final thrust. Soom-chan, I'm C-U-M-M-M-I-N-G. Naruto yelled as he sent his entire load into Soom's pussy. Soom felt so warm as her high came also. Naruto-kun, I'm coming. Soom yelled as Naruto felt his cock get drenched with Soom's juices. Soom dropped her hips to the bed as Naruto slowly pulled out his cock. Naruto laid on the bed next to Soom and gave her a soft kiss. Soom returned the kiss and looked into Naruto's deep blue eyes. You're the perfect alpha male for me Naruto-kun, Soom said to him. Naruto chuckled with a nod as a gleam got in his eyes. Then let me prove that title again, Naruto said as he got back on top of Soom. Soom gasped, but smiled as they two continued their session which ended up in tearing the sheets and some of the bed to pieces. Naruto laid back on the bed with Soom and gently rushed his hand through on her face as he watched her sleep peacefully. I love you Soom-chan, Naruto said as he went back to sleep with his girlfriend. Next morning. Naruto groggily opened his eyes to the rays of sunshine as he turned his head to see it was morning. 
He slowly rubbed his eyes across his face and looked from where he was sleeping to see Soom next to him. Naruto widened his eyes as he found himself in the Inazuka compound. Naruto then chuckled softly when he remembered how he and Soom celebrated his promotion to Tokubatsu Jonin yesterday which seemed to have caused multiple scratches and claw marks on the walls and a torn bed. Naruto suddenly shivered when he recalled Soom's amazing stamina. Naruto didn't even think it was possible for him to get tired, but Soom proved such a point wrong. Naruto cut the memories and kissed Soom's cheek getting a stir from her. Soom slowly opened her eyes to see a toned chest in front of her and looked up to see her new boyfriend's face. Good morning Naruto-kun. I'm surprised you got up before me, Soom said which made Naruto chuckle. Naruto breezed his hands through Soom's sharp-looking hair and brought her closer to him. It wasn't easy Soom-chan. You really know how to celebrate, Naruto told her. Soom blushed, but nodded with a smile and leaned forward to give Naruto a small kiss. Naruto gratefully accepted the warm feeling of her lips while their tongues danced around for a while. Both separated and panted slightly as Naruto got up from the ripped covers. Naruto got to his feet and turned his head to Soom who was starting to get up also. Naruto grabbed his shirt and pants and got dressed while Soom did the same. So what now? Am I the head of the Inazuka clan? Naruto asked as a small joke. Soom chuckled and put on her shinobi sandals before walking towards the door. Naruto followed her lead out the door as both entered the kitchen where Hana, Kiba, Akamaru, and Kasumi were. Kasumi turning to her blonde, yipped as she jumped into his arms and licked his face. Naruto-sama, you smell like Soom. Not to mention you were both quite loud, Kasumi said with a smile. Naruto blushed and tried to avoid her gaze, but failed miserably at the act. Sorry about that Kasumi-chan. I'll try to be quieter, Naruto said which made Kasumi roll her eyes. Yeah right Naruto-sama, Kasumi said as she leapt back down to the floor. Naruto turned his head to see Kiba with a big grin on his face along with Hana and took a seat between them while Hana continued to drink her tea and Kiba continued to pet Akamaru. Naruto found the silence deafening and turned grabbed both of their shoulders. Don't ignore me you two. Naruto yelled which made Soom smirk while preparing breakfast for everyone. Kiba grinned along with Hana as the two Inazukas turned to Naruto with their smiles blooming. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he feared that something was coming, but he didn't know what it was. Kiba and Hana kept up the grin while Soom gave Naruto some water. Naruto took the cup and drank it slowly while still keeping his eyes on his best friend and his sister. Kiba placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder and got a gleam in his eye. Sorry Tusan, didn't mean to ignore you, Kiba said effectively making Naruto choke on his water. Hana chuckled hard as Naruto coughed from the water nearly suffocating him. Naruto glared at Kiba and gave a soft but deadly smile to the Inazuka boy. Kiba, don't call me Tusan, Naruto said to him. Kiba kept up his smirk along with Soom and Hana. Kyuubi being woken up had to laugh also from the joke that the Inazukas were putting on Naruto. Hana soon placed her hand on Naruto's shoulder and gave a confused, but amused look. Why shouldn't he call you Tu-san, Tu-san? You're our Tu-san and that's the way it is, Hana said while Naruto turned his glare to Hana. Naruto sighed and stood up before cracking his knuckles. Kiba and Hana sweated slightly and began to back away as Naruto reached for a kunai. Naruto suddenly dashed at Hana and Kiba while barely missing the brother and sister duo. Stop calling me Tu-san. Naruto yelled as he chased after them around the compound while flailing his kunai around like a madman. Hana and Kiba laughed as they avoid Naruto and his rants. Soom placed breakfast on the table and could only chuckle while she saw Kiba yell for her. Kasan, tell Tusan it's dangerous to chase his kids with sharp objects, Kiba yelled as he avoided another slash from Naruto. Naruto seethed from the joke that Kiba and Hana were using against him and suddenly got serious. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Naruto yelled. Kiba, Hana, and Soom turned the gazes to see 13 Cage Bunshins appeared which caused Hana and Kiba to sweat slightly. In little to no time at all, Kiba and Hana were cornered out in the yard, but couldn't keep the grins of their faces as Naruto neared them. Now stop calling me Tu-san. At least wait until I'm actually married to Soom-chan, Naruto pleaded. Hana and Kiba chuckled, but nodded and decided to stop the games. 
Soong called for everyone that breakfast was ready as the Naruto, Kiba, and Hana returned to their seats and ate the food in silence. Kasumi sat in Naruto's lap while Naruto gave her small bits of dog food for her to eat. Soong slowly ate a bowl of rice, but placed it down and put her elbows on the table. Well let's all talk now, Soong said to everyone. Naruto stopped eating along with Hana and Kiba and gave Soong their full attention. Soong gathered all of her remaining thoughts in her head before speaking and turned her stares to Naruto. Naruto-kun, I hope you realize that dating a clan head is quite serious, Soong said to him. Naruto narrowed his eyes since he remembered that Soong said, in his earlier years, that he would need to know some things should they date. Naruto simply nodded which allowed Soong to continue with the conversation. Since the CRA was enacted on you, you have to choose the women you want to be with. I'm not going to have weak females in this life so you will have to discuss things with me before acting. Just cause you're the alpha male, it doesn't mean you can do whatever you want in the Inazuka compound, Soong said to him. Hana and Kiba turned the gazes to Naruto who narrowed his eyes and looked at the table for a second before answering. So this is simply a discussion between you and me about the women I should have. I was planning on telling you about them anyway. I mean it not like you wouldn't see them around if you're the alpha female, Naruto calmly responded. Soom nodded slowly while Naruto had a grin on his face that no one missed. Then can you meet someone right now? Naruto asked her. Soom and Hana quirked up an eyebrow, but Kiba smirked as Naruto bit his thumb and slammed it on the floor. Kuchio's no jutsu, Naruto yelled as smoke engulfed a portion of the kitchen. The smoke didn't stay long before everyone was staring at Kyuubi in her black kimono and her red hair flowing down her back. Kyuubi had her incredulous look on her face and turned to Naruto. A little warning next time would be nice Naruto-kun, Kyuubi said with a small pout. Naruto sheepishly grinned and rubbed the back of his head while looking at his sexy vixen. Sorry about that Kyuubi-chan. I simply figured that Soom-chan would want to met my vixen, Naruto said which surprised Hana and Soom. Hana widened her eyes along with Soom as the two girls stood to their feet and pointed at Naruto. Naruto-kun, how is Kyuubi out? Shouldn't she be sealed? Hana asked. Naruto went into a thinking pose while trying to answer the question that Hana had posed on him. Soom took in Kyuubi's features and could say that she looked like the type of woman guys would kill for. After hearing Naruto's story about the Kyuubi and Kanoa those few years back, Soom and Hana didn't really hate Kyuubi anymore since she was more of a victim than an attacker, but the thought of Kyuubi being out in the open was a little unsettling. Technically she isn't free Hana-chan. I was able to release her from the seal so she can enjoy the outdoors, but the seal is still in effect. If I die then she dies also. Kyuubi promised me that she wouldn't hurt the civilians despite the life I lived and she's been there all my life, so along with you, Soom-chan and Kiba, I trust and love her, Naruto said to them. Soom kept her gaze on Kyuubi while Kyuubi turned her own to Soom and smiled. It's nice to see the one whom Naruto-kun loves so much, Kyuubi said which got Soom out of her serious gaze before she smiled and reached out her hand. Kyuubi gave it a firm shake as the two women smiled at each other. Can I trust that you won't destroy my clan and the village? Soom asked as a joke to which Kyuubi gave a soft smile and shrugged her shoulder at the question. Soom's chakra flared along with Kyuubi's as both the grips got harder. Naruto, Kiba, and Hana Sweet dropped while their dogs backed behind their individual masters. Both women kept up the duel for a while, but Kyuubi ultimately stopped and released Soom's hand before going back to a sweet tone. I'll try not to destroy this village for Naruto-kun's sake, but I make no promises with its civilian council nor the bastard who placed me under that genjutsu, Kyuubi responded though was surprised when Soom snickered and nodded in agreement with Kyuubi about the council members. Soom turned to Naruto and the others and smiled. Well due to, circumstances, I'm sure Kyuubi is more than strong enough so if you love her then I don't see why not. Anyone else you going to surprise me with? Soom asked. Naruto gleamed and was about to point at Kasumi, but stopped as everyone heard a knock on the door. Naruto paused while Soom went to answer the door. After about three minutes, Soom returned with a groan while scratching the top of her head. Naruto-kun, we need to get dressed. You, me, and Kiba and Haku are needed in the council room immediately, Soom said unconsciously turning her gaze to Kyuubi. Naruto paled slightly at the thought of someone having seen Kyuubi when he summoned her for help against Shukaku. 
He was going against a damn Bayou who was hellbent on destroying the village. Why shouldn't he have asked QB for help? If he didn't Kanoa wouldn't have been destroyed, but people wouldn't be able to call it one of five the great nations anymore. Naruto sighed and simply nodded having left the kitchen with the others as he found his dark green vest on the couch. Naruto, having already been dressed, put on his shinobi sandals and strapped his two swords to his side and placed his jonin vest around his usual clothes. Soom came down the stairs in some better clothes for the meeting. Kiba came after Soom deciding not to wear his chunin vest since it wouldn't look good with his regular clothes which reminded him that he needed some new ones after the meeting. Alright is everyone ready to go? Naruto asked them. Soom and Kiba nodded while Kasumi, Akamaru and Kuromaru, came into the room. Kasumi jumped into Naruto's jacket and Akamaru took his place on Kiba's head while Kuromaru stayed at Soom's side sparing a glance at Naruto with his daughter. Kuromaru had respect for Naruto since the boy exuded strength, confidence and an overall power that could just make anyone nearly fall before him. Kuromaru didn't really care that his daughter had a love for Naruto. It actually made him happy, but he would still be the overprotective father that he was when it came to Kasumi. After spending some time walking, Naruto and the others came to see Haku waiting for them at the entrance to the Hokage mansion. Naruto gave a small wave while Haku smiled and joined the group. Naruto started to make small conversation with Haku and Kiba since he wondered what they did yesterday. Kiba told Naruto that they simply celebrated at a barbecue restaurant with Shikamaru and Shino. Haku chuckled when she remembered Shino's stoic, but slightly depressed face when he told them that they had a reason to celebrate and he didn't. Naruto snickered since he felt bad for Shino, but he knew the man would try again and succeed. Everyone walked inside and passed the receptionist who gave Naruto a scowl, but her gaze shifted to a scared expression when she felt the stares of Kyubi, Sum, and Haku on her. Naruto simply ignored it while everyone went into the council room. Looks like everyone's here, Naruto said to his group while the civilian council glared at him and most of the shinobi council had impassive looks on their faces. Sum sighed and turned to Naruto with a small smile and kissed his cheek which effectively got a rise out of nearly everyone in the room who didn't know about Sum and Naruto's relationship since it pretty much just started yesterday. Soom waved goodbye to Naruto and the others as she took her seat on the council with Kuromaru laying down at her side. Naruto gave a soft yawn trying to keep himself cool, but inside he was wrecking himself trying to think of a way to tell the council about Kyubi if they saw her. Soon Sarutobi came to the center and sat in his seat as the meeting began. All right we are all here so let's have this meeting go underway, Sarutobi said. Everyone nodded and turned the gazes to Naruto who felt like he was a lamb to the slaughter seeing most of the shinobi council look at him. Hyashi especially glared at him harder, but he tried to ignore it all. Naruto-kun do you know why you have been summoned here? Sarutobi asked. Naruto shook his head in a negative while Sarutobi took a puff of his smoke and returned his gaze to Naruto. It seems that most of the shinobi council would like an explanation for your match against Neji Huga during the Chunin exams, Sarutobi mentioned. Naruto seemed to relax a little as it wasn't the question he thought it was. All right Gigi, what would you and the shinobi council like to now? Naruto asked them. Sarutobi turned his eyes to the shinobi side to enter the conversation though out of the corner of his eye, he saw Danzo smirking and took note of that. Inaki stood to his feet and looked at Naruto with a calculative look before speaking. Naruto-san, we would like to know about some of your skills during the Chunin exams, Inaki said trying to find the best words to use. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the Yamanaka head, but nodded as Inaki continued. We would like to know how you acquired the Dojutsu and the skills of the Hyuga clan. We are very much aware of your new Dojutsu and that it allows you to copy bloodlines, but please tell us how you acquired those skills, Inaki said as everyone clan head had the gazes on Naruto, even Soom really wanted to know, but she didn't seem too interested since she could ask Naruto about it whenever she wanted. Naruto sighed and ran his hand through his blonde, spiky hair. I got the Byakugan when I saw the match Neji Huga had against Hanata Huga. I was angry that he could do that to a member of his own family and I unconsciously activated my dojutsu while Neji's was still active. That's how I got the Byakugan. As to how I was able to use the Jukensa effectively that I was able to beat Neji, well. 
Dot, dot. I remember watching two Hugo clan members sparing in a training ground and I watched them during that time. I didn't know if they were main branch or side branch members so I simply watched, Naruto simply said to them. Everyone nodded with their understanding even if only Naruto, Kiba, Kyuubi, and Kasumi knew it was only half truth. Inaki nodded and took his seat while Hyashi stood to his feet. I find it nearly impossible that you could master the Jukan to such a level in a mere month. Not even the most efficient Hyuga member can learn the Jukan that fast, Hyashi said trying to refute Naruto's stance. Naruto sighed again and scratched the back of his head while looking at Hyashi. Nothing impossible with the cage bunshin jutsu. What would take nearly 12 years for you people, would only take about 2 to 3 weeks for me. So imagine hundreds of clones with the Byakugan and Jukan while they practice. Although I'm not, I think I could tea least make even you sweat Hyashi-san, Naruto said with a smile. Haku and Kiba snickered while Hyashi gave Naruto a deep glare for a response, however the entire room was shocked at what Naruto did after that. Naruto bowed his head much to everyone's surprise as he kept his head low before Hyashi. Hyashi-san, I am however sorry that you think I stole your dojutsu from you and your clan. I wouldn't intentionally steal techniques from others without their permission. I would simply like to say sorry if I offended your clan in any way, Naruto simply said to him. Hyashi's glare softened while he gave a quick nod and sat back down. Sarutobi smiled at Naruto for his apology while Shikaku stood up. So Naruto, you can copy any dojutsu or bloodline. It doesn't matter what it is. Shikaku asked. Naruto simply nodded while Kyuubi scoffed in her house in the mindscape. Is he saying that I can't make something like that? Sure it took me quite a bit of time to make, but come on. I'm one hell of a genius. HMPH, some people have no respect for the brilliant, Kyuubi said while Naruto gave a soft chuckle before turning back to Shikaku to answer his question. Yes Shikaku-san, it doesn't matter which dojutsu or bloodline I copy. I'm capable of copying them all. I could even copy yours, Inaki-san's, Shibi-san's and Chuza-san's bloodlines, Naruto said with a simply shrug of his shoulders. Shikaku raised an eyebrow along with Inaki while Chuza had his jaw slightly hanging. Shibi raised an eyebrow at the proclamation, but didn't say anything. Soom chuckled slightly, but didn't pay too much mind to all the things that she already knew. It did baffle her in the earlier years how Naruto was able to use the Inazuka techniques, but she chalked it up to Kyuubi and her abilities instead of asking questions. Shikaku turned to Sarutobi with a questioning gaze. Hokage Sama what do you think we should do? Naruto isn't a part of any of the clans of Kanoa, yet he can use our techniques. Do you think he should have his own clan or should he join one of the already exiting ones? Shikaku asked. Sarutobi sighed and put his elbows on the table and looked at the clan heads, then Naruto and back. Sarutobi soon scratched the back of his head as he found this to be unavoidable anymore. Naruto-kun already has his own clan, Sarutobi said which made everyone gasp. Even Soom got interested. Haku and Kiba turned to Naruto in confusion while Naruto had the same look on his face while everyone wondered what their hockage was talking about. Danzo and the elders turned their heads from Sarutobi to Naruto and back. What do you mean Hokage Sama? This. Dot boy doesn't belong to any clan within Kanoa, a member of the civilian council said to him. Sarutobi chuckled and took out his pipe while continuing to look at Naruto. Actually he does. Naruto-kun here is actually a member of two families, he's the heir to the Uzumaki clan. The Uzumaki were a proficient clan allied with Kanoa. They're actually one of the founding clans of Kanoa, but were wiped out. Naruto-kun is the last Uzumaki and therefore the heir to the clan and all its jutsus. He's also the last person of one last family. It wasn't a clan, but it was an important family, Sarutobi said keeping everyone in suspense. Well, almost everyone. Naruto knew about being the last Namikas, but being the clan head of the Uzumaki clan he didn't. Naruto nearly fell to the floor from that information. All the clan heads turned to him along with the civilian council while Danzo gritted his teeth. Well Sarutobi, tell us who this boy's family is. It might be important to the benefit of Kanoa, Danzo said while Sarutobi chuckled and turned his gaze to Naruto. Naruto-kun, due to circumstances, I wasn't able to tell you about your parents. I'm sorry about that, but it was a promise. 
I wasn't able to tell either until you turned 18 or became a chun in which you made tokubatsu jonan so you're more than eligible to hear this, Sarutobi said while everyone tensed. Naruto for a fact knew who his father was, but his mother, he wanted to know so much. Kiba gulped along with Haku like they felt they were about to hear something amazing. Well Hokage Sama what is it now that the Uzumaki is, capable, enough. Homura said while Naruto narrowed his eyes at the man. Sarutobi gave a grin and pointed at Naruto. I'm actually surprised that no one figured it out, especially you Shikaku, Sarutobi said to the Jonan commander. Shikaku turned to Naruto and squinted his eyes at the blonde. Wait, blonde hair, blue eyes, remove the whisker marks, add a few years to his current age and, Shikaku suddenly gasped and dropped his jaw while Sarutobi smirked. Naruto-kun is the son of the Yondime, Minato Namikas, and the Red Death, Kushina Uzumaki. He is the last of the Namika's family, Sarutobi said stunning everyone in the room. Naruto widened his eyes at the mention of his mother's name. Soom dropped her jaw along with the other clan heads while the civilian council muttered to themselves about such an impossibility. Kiba and Haku gave Naruto an incredulous look while Danzo showed a hidden smirk across his face. How is it possible? The Yondai never had a son and even if he did it wouldn't be such a lowly shinobi like this, someone said as Sarutobi leaked some key around the room. Everyone stiffened and kept quiet while Sarutobi continued. Naruto-kun there is a compound deep in the woods past the Avarem family and the Hyuga family. You will find the Namika's compound there. As to the benefits of being a clan head, you are allowed a seat on the council. However since you're a clan head, you the CRA strengthens with you and you need more than four women to maintain a stable clan, Sarutobi said while Naruto raised an eyebrow and sighed. So how many this time? Naruto asked to which Sarutobi chuckled at his frustration in the matter. You will need at least ten women for a stable clan, Sarutobi said to which Naruto's mouth hanged slightly in the air. Naruto wondered if it was too late to revoke his shinobi license but didn't dare since he'd be at the mercy of the civilian council and he would have none of that. Naruto groaned and turned to Shibi, Shikaku, and Inaki. I don't see why those three don't have that many women hanging around them, Naruto said while Shikaku, Shibi, and Inaki softly chuckled at his point in the matter. Sarutobi smiled, but nodded as he switched his gaze to the three clan heads of the Inoshika Cho trio. It varies for clans depending on the dojutsu or bloodline. Dojutsu uses are more substantial so the amount of people for a stable clan depends. Since yours is new and quite powerful, you need that many to make sure you have a successful chance of passing your dojutsu down to the clans, Sarutobi explained. Naruto slumped his shoulders and turned his gaze to Sum, who smiled weakly at him and shrugged her shoulders. Naruto rubbed his temples while Sarutobi took something out of his pocket. Naruto-kun, here is a note from your father. I wanted to give it to you sooner, but you ran away so fast I couldn't. I assume you had some other business to take care of, Sarutobi encoded while turning his gaze to see Soom blush along with Naruto. Naruto got the note from an Anbu and looked at the contents. Dear Naruto. Hey son how are you doing? This is your father talking to you. The QB is currently outside Kanoa and it doesn't look like it's going to leave. I know you must be mad at me for the burden I placed on you but I want you to know that I believe in you and that you can use the QB for the benefit of the village. You should have seen your mother when I told her my plan. She got really mad at me, but I had no choice. She was still weak from the child birthing so I had to knock her out. I have no idea where she is right now, but if she's still alive, I'd imagine that she thinks you're dead. If you find her, please don't be upset with her. I think it's her maternal instinct that she has so much grief. I asked Sarutobi not to talk about you until you could handle yourself against my enemies. I was a rather sore spot with Iwa and they would love for the chance to kill me. I didn't want you dying because of your two sands so I kept it hidden. Find our compound and led it well. I leave my most proficient techniques with you, the raising gun along with the Horatian. Both are quite difficult to master, but I know you can do it. I think I'm out of time so I must go. Make your two sand proud and find your car sand for me and tell her I'm sorry. I love you Naruto. Your father, Minato Namikas. Naruto finished reading the note and let a few tears fall down his face while he clutched the note in his hand. The council room was unnaturally silent while people tried to judge Naruto's reaction. 
Naruto gave a soft smile and chuckled slightly. Are you okay Naruto-kun? QB asked feeling very worried for the blonde that she cared so much about. Naruto smiled and lowered his head a little more before answering. I'm fine qb chan just a little shaken up, Naruto softly said before returning to everyone's attention. Naruto smiled and looked at Sarutobi. Thank you Gigi, I would love to take over the Uzumaki clan and the Namika's family. I know it will be hard, but I know I can do it. Just one question, Naruto said bringing everyone's attention to him. What is it Naruto-kun? Sarutobi asked with everyone wanting to know his question. If the Sharingan is so important, then why don't you enact the CRA on the team or give him a clan seat? Naruto asked wondering if he would regret that question. Everyone widened their eyes as most were simply tending to the Uchiha, but never thought of that as some turn to Sarutobi. That is a good question Naruto-kun. One that I don't have an answer to unfortunately, Sarutobi said which caused Naruto to shrug his shoulders at the response. So if that's it then why did Haku and Kiba have to be here? Naruto asked which brought Sarutobi back to some other matters. Haku and Kiba turned the gazes to their hockage while everyone went back to their matters. Right, well it seems during the invasion some Anbu claimed to have seen two Bayu fighting each other. I know that one of Suna's genin is a Jinchuriki, but did your seal weaken any? Sarutobi asked while some of the council got worried. Naruto mentally cursed as he wasn't prepared for that question. Naruto knew if he told them about Kyubi being free, Dojutsu or not, Namika's and Uzumaki family or not, he would be done for. I admit I was fighting Gara's full Bayou form of the Shukaku, but I don't remember the giant fox the Anbu probably saw was one of my fox summons. I have the fox contract and there are some foxes that are as big as Kyubi, but they're nowhere near as strong. Maybe that's what they saw, Naruto said while some of the clan seemed to relax. Soon mentally chuckled at that, but didn't say anything as such a secret would surely cause mass hysteria in the village. Haku-san, Kiba-san can you confirm Naruto's statement? Sarutobi asked the two recently promoted Chunin. Haku and Kiba nodded in agreement with Naruto since they knew how much of a touchy subject QB was for everyone. Sarutobi and the council nodded, not deciding to push the issue any further. All right Naruto-kun, I have just one more piece of information for you and your squad, Sarutobi said to them. Naruto, Haku and Kiba raised their eyebrows while being tossed a book. Kiba and Haku looked over Naruto's shoulder while they all gasped. You can't be serious, Naruto said which made Sarutobi nod his head. Naruto, Haku and Kiba were looking at the bingo book and all the names were in it which was incredible. Name. Naruto Uzumaki. Birth. October 10th. Height. 5 feet. Weight. 96 pounds. Occupation. Tokubatsu Jonan of Konohagakur. Information. Known for possessing above average skills with Katen, Fuyuten and Reiten Jutsu. Defeated the Ichibi no Shukaku. Container of the QB no Kitsune. Known for defeating A rank missing Nin, Raymond Hichazi, more formally known as the Storm of Kumo. Skills Ninjutsu, High, Taijutsu, High, Genjutsu, Medium, Kenjutsu, High. Naruto Uzumaki is somehow able to utilize bloodlines and dojutsu from different clans in battle. Has a dog for a companion that he uses in battle. Is more powerful when teamed up with Kiba Inazuka. Bounty. 30 million yen for capture and brought to Iwa. Status, B rank. Approach with caution. Approach with extreme caution when Kiba Inazuka is with him. Name, Haku Momaki. Birth, January 9th. Height, 5.2 feet. Weight, 95 pounds. Occupation, Chunin of Konohagakur. Information, possesses a Kekai Genkai for ice release from the Yuki clan. Used to be the companion of Kirigakur missing Nin Zabuza Momaki. Skills, Ninjutsu, high, taijutsu, medium, genjutsu, low, kenjutsu, medium. Is able to use the guillotine sword of Zabuza in battle with Kekai Genkai. Bounty, 15 million yen for capture and brought to Kumo. Status, B rank. Approach with numbers. Name, Kiba Inazuka. Birth, July 7th. Height, 5 feet. Weight, 98 pounds. Occupation, Chunin of Konohagakur. Information, heir to the Inazuka clan. Uses a dog in combat. Sometimes brash, but an overall troublesome opponent. Skills, ninjutsu, medium, taijutsu, high, genjutsu, 
Lo, Kenjutsu, Nun, is able to time his attacks to deal the most damage to his opponents. Is more powerful when teamed up with Naruto Uzumaki. Bounty, 10 million yen for capture and brought Oto. Status, B rank. Approach with slight caution. Approach with extreme caution, when Naruto Uzumaki is with him. All three looked at the names and turned back to the council members with looks of surprise on their faces. This is a joke right? Kiba asked which caused some of them to shake their heads. Kiba, Haku and Naruto sighed at the troublesome news while their attention was brought back to the hockage. It seems some of you exploits were noticed during the Chunin exams. People are going to be coming after you so be careful and more alert from now on, Sarutobi told them. All three nodded as Sarutobi clapped his hands. All right if that's the end of this meeting. Wait, Gigi one last question, Naruto said bringing everyone back to him. Sarutobi sat back in his seat and gave Naruto his best smile. Yes Naruto-kun. Naruto smiled as he sensed that everyone wanted to go, but wanted this last question answered. Is it possible for two clan heads to combine their clans into one major clan? Naruto asked. Everyone raised an eyebrow at his question with some wanting to know the answer to that question. While it's not common it is allowed between clan heads if they want. Why do you ask? Sarutobi asked as he noticed a gleam in Naruto eye which made him slightly shudder. Oh nothing Gigi. Just natural curiosity, Naruto said to them. Everyone gave him a confused grin, but shrugged their shoulders while Sarutobi stood to his feet. If that's all from everyone then I hereby declare this meeting adjourned, Sarutobi said as everyone filed out. Naruto, Haku and Kiba met up with Sum as all four walked back to the Inazuka compound. Never thought I'd be in the bingo book so early, Kiba said while Sum patted his back. That's my Kiba. Don't lose pup. I don't take kindly to losers, Soom said, but stiffened when she felt a finger trace her back. Soom turned to see Naruto with a smile on his face. Don't be like that Soom-chan. You know me, Kiba and Haku won't lose to anyone, Naruto said while Soom blushed. Soom then chuckled and kissed Naruto cheek out in public which got a few murmurs from the people who saw. Naruto blushed before looking back at Soom. I didn't know you were so bold Soom-chan, Naruto told her. Soom smirked as they continued to walk. There's lots of things you don't know about me Naruto-kun, Soom said to him. Naruto raised an eyebrow, but grinned and whispered in her ear. I look forward to learning a lot more about my alpha female, Naruto said effectively causing Soom to blush a near deep shade of red. So Naruto-kun, when are you going to your compound? Haku asked him. Naruto smirked and turned to the direction of his apartment. Right now, as soon as I pack my things, you should pack also Haku-chan, you're going to be living with me. I don't mind adding you to my clan. We aren't lovers yet and I know Soom-chan would want to test you in some way, but I think I can do this much, Naruto told her. Haku blushed slightly, but nodded as she and Naruto walked off to the apartment, however Soom stopped him and brought him back to her gaze. Before you go and before this whole having a ten-woman harem thing started, who was the last of the four you wanted? Soom asked which made Naruto blush. Naruto unzipped his jacket slightly as Kasumi popped her head out from the jacket. Naruto pointed to Kasumi which made Kiba and Soom gasp. You picked Kasumi. You're into that stuff. Kiba asked finding the situation quite funny. Naruto simply shrugged his shoulders and gave Kasumi a small kiss on the head which she returned with a lick on his cheek. Sorry, but I love Kasumi-chan also. I can't be without her Soom-chan, Naruto told her. Soom looked at Kasumi who seemed to be whimpering and suddenly smiled. Kasumi showed you her human form didn't she? Soom asked causing Naruto to gasp that she knew. Soom rolled her eyes and waved his confusion off with her hand. Please Naruto-kun, you're not the first to be attracted to their companion. Some of the more earlier members loved their companions that way too. It was really looked down upon by most so they either kept it secret or didn't do anything. Don't feel bad about it too much, Soom said to him. Naruto chuckled while Kasumi gave a small yip of happiness. I never knew that. Why is our clan so weird? Kiba asked while Soom patted his back. I want you to see one of our female dogs use the man-beast clone jutsu and see their human form. You won't think it's so weird then pup, Soom said which made Kiba blush.
Sum and Kiba walked back to the Inazuka compound while Naruto and Haku walked back to their apartment to pack their things. Naruto-sama, do you think I could talk to Kyuubi-sama for a few minutes? Kasumi asked him. Naruto turned to and nodded with a smile and spoke to Kyuubi. Kasumi closed her eyes and was suddenly brought to the mindscape. Kasumi changed to her half-human form and walked around to find Kyuubi. Kasumi saw Kyuubi sitting on a tree and sat next to her. Naruto-kun said you wanted to talk to me. Kyuubi said. Kasumi nodded with a small blush across her face. Kasumi looked up at Kyuubi's form for a second and looked back down. Um Kyuubi-sama, do you think I could ask for a favor? Kasumi asked her. Kyuubi raised an eyebrow, but nodded. Depends on what you want, but sure. What's your favor? Kyuubi asked her. Kasumi's blush deepened, but for Naruto she felt that she should go along with it. Kyuubi-sama, I I want to be able to have kids with Naruto-sama. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.